If you want to get into the world of web design, you've probably considered working with WordPress. Uh, because you've also probably heard that almost 35% of the internet is run on WordPress. Uh, but it can feel really overwhelming when you don't know where to start. So in this video I want to show you the main key principles of WordPress so you can decide if this is a system you can understand and you want to try for your next website project. So this is how WordPress looks out of the box, this is a clean install on a new website. Uh, this is one of my clients websites and I'm going to show you how it works inside of this uh, real project. So I've installed WordPress, I've downloaded it for free on wordpress.org slash download. Uh, don't confuse it with wordpress.com because that's uh, the limited version of WordPress. If you don't know how to install WordPress on a domain, I also have a video about that. It's linked in the description, but this is what you get when you install WordPress. WordPress and we're here on the dashboard um, you will get a lot of tips on how to use WordPress but in my experience this is a little bit confusing so just gonna click this away so this is the main dashboard uh, we have the top bar over here and you can see that I'm logged in over here here's your account and here is a link to the actual website so this is the background in WordPress and if you want to visit your website you can click on visit site and then you will go to your website like this. So this is the live website and now this is just the standard theme of WordPress, nothing really special. So I will just go back to my dashboard. One of the things I always do is open this in a new tab. So if you comment or control click, you can open your website in a new tab. And then if you make changes over here, you can go over here and then you can see the changes if you refresh the page uh, like this. So we have this top bar over here, but to be honest, I'm gonna use this top bar, uh, maybe only to log out sometimes and to click on visit the website, but there's not a lot of use for this top bar. Uh, this bar, the sidebar is very useful and you use the sidebar for your main navigation. So let's just start with the basics of the basics and that is pages, uh, because every website consists of a few pages. So WordPress gives you two pages out of the box that you can view, just examples. So the sample page, for example, if you want to view a website, you just click on view. So I always use command or control to open it in a new tab. And then you can see the page like this. I don't know why they put all of these icons here, but this is the inside of a page. So here are all of your pages. So if you want to create a home page, for example, you just click on add new and you can create a home page. So we're going to do that real quick. I'm going to click on add new, click this away. And now I'm going to type in home. So this is the home page. So there's a few settings over here and don't worry about it. The only thing you have to know is that if you save it to the draft, the page is not live. A preview is of course a preview. And if you click publish, then this page is live. So if I click publish right now and publish again, now this page is live. So now I can go to this page and can click on this link. And now we have a hoofvisor.nl slash home. So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard, back to pages. And as you can see, now the home page is added. So this is where all of your home pages are. So your about page, your contact page, it's just a list. You can delete them, you can quick edit them, or you can edit the inside of a page like this. Then another key concept of WordPress is the post. And post is just another word for blog post because uh, WordPress is kind of a blog system, uh, but most people don't use it for a blog, but you can really easily create a blog because a blog is built in inside of WordPress. And as you can see, WordPress has already made a blog post example. So they have this blog post over here. It's called Hello World. So on every new website, you will get this example blog post. So let's view that for now. I'm gonna open that in a new tab. And this is what a blog post looks like right now. There should be text here, but in this theme, it's icons. But a blog post uh, normally looks something like this. So it has a image, it has a title, it has a date, and then it has a lot of text. And that is how a blog post looks. So here it works in the same way. If you want to create a new blog post, you click on add new, you add a title, you add uh, all of your text, you, you add your images. And then if you click on publish, you can view your uh, blog post. If you have a lot of blog posts, you can even create categories to categorize all of your blog posts, which makes it easier uh, to find your blog posts. But also for users of your site, they can click on the categories. So if I scroll down, you can see in this theme, we have categories. So if you create a lot of categories, you can have a category for, uh, for business, for travel, for anything you want uh, to categorize your blog posts. 
So that's everything you need to know right now for the blog post. And then you have the media over here and the media is where all of your images, uh, your sounds and your videos are. You can even upload PDFs in here. So uh, JPEG, PNG, uh, SVG, PDF, MP4. You can upload any file in here and you can use those images on your website. So let's try that for now. So this is my logos client as you can see, you don't even have to use the add new button. So you can just drag in a logo like this and then it starts uploading. And now you can use this image on the website wherever you want. This is just a library where all of your images that you will ever upload are saved. You will also get information about the image as you can see it's a PNG. This is the size, it's a pretty big image. This is the file size. And if you want, you can also delete it right here. So that's all you need to know for the media. Now you have the comments. So if you have a blog, your blog post can have comments. I don't use this feature as often uh, because on most blog websites that I create, I don't have a comment section, but some websites have it. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back to the blog post and you have your hello world blog post example, you can scroll down and you can see that there's one comment over here. And as you can see, this is the example comment. So any comment that you will get on your blog will be displayed over here like this. Now also a key concept that you have to understand are the teams. So under appearances, you have a few options. Um, and on most websites, you only use the teams and you use the menus. And the teams is kind of like the style on your whole website. So right now we have this uh, team installed. That's the basic team of WordPress. But if you want to install another team, you can do that over here. So this will, this will change the whole style of your website. The team that I always use and I recommend to a lot of beginners is really easy to customize is Astra. It's a very popular team uh, and it's also free. So here it is Astra. So I'm going to install that now. And now you can see how this will change the look and feel of the website. Uh, if you want, you can preview it up front before you install uh, the team. So now I can activate it because I know this is a good team. And now let's go back to our website and click on the refresh. And now the whole style of the website is changed. It doesn't look very pretty, but the beauty about this team is that you can change a lot of styling options. So this really gives you the design power that you want because you want to customize your blog to your design taste, of course. So if you click on customize, you can change a lot of design settings of your team right here. So for example, the header, which is this top part. Let's say that we want to upload the logo, for example. So if you click on site identity, we can upload the logo here. So we can select our logo, which we've already uploaded in our media library. So here it is, the logo we've just uploaded. If you now click on select, uh, I don't want to crop it. So I'm gonna click on skip cropping. And as you can see right now, uh, the logo will be uploaded to the website. It's massive, so I'm gonna scale that down. It's just super easy with a slider over here for example if i don't want this title over here i can just delete it like this and now we have a pretty nice header with a logo and the page that we have just created and the sample page that wordpress has created and now if i click on publish uh, i have changed a design aspect of this team so now i can click on the x i'm back on the home page and now the website looks like this so this whole part is what you call the header and this inside of the header is what you call the menu. So we saw that already. If we go back to our WordPress dashboard and from appearance, we go to menus, then we can set up a menu in here. So if you have a different menu in your header than that you have in your footer, because you also can make pages clickable in your footer, which is the bottom of your website, you can do that right here. So you can create a menu uh, for your website. Uh, right now, every page that I add to the pages section will automatically be added to the menu. But that's not what you want, because in a lot of cases you're working on a page, but you don't want the public to see that page yet. So that's why you want to create a menu. Creating a menu is also super easy. Uh, the top menu, I always call that the top main menu. And if you then click on create, you can select the pages that you want in that menu over here. So now I'm gonna select only the home because I don't want the sample page. I click on add, the, add to menu. And here I have my home 
page now inside of my menu. So now you want to tell WordPress where you want to show this menu. The primary menu is the menu on top over here. So if I then go back and I click on save and I go back to my website and I click on refresh, you're going to see what they were only going to see the home page over here. And in this way, you can customize the menu. So that's also one of the key features that you need to know about WordPress. So let's now continue with the plugins. You can kind of compare plugins to apps on your smartphone. So for example, if you want to know how much people are visiting your website, you can install an analytics plugin, right? So let's just do that for now to show you how that works. So if we click on add new or this button over here, you can search for uh, plugins over here, or you can just go to the popular section over here. But I almost always use the search feature. So for example, if you want uh, an analytics plugin, you just search for analytics over here and then you have a lot of options uh, of other companies that are providing analytic plugins and most of these are free. If there's an install now button, you can just install that, but sometimes you have limitations and if you want to get more features, you have to pay because this is how those uh, companies make money. But to be honest, um, on almost all of my websites, 80% uh, of the plugins that I use are free and maybe 10% uh, or 20% is paid. So you can really build a website with, with free plugins. So that is really nice. So for example, analytics, or if you want a security plugin to make your website secure, you can just search for security and you will get a lot of options. I always use this option, by the way. And if you also want me to make a video about the plugins that I use on most websites, uh, just please tell me. Uh, so a few other examples that I always install on a website, a backup plugin, that's very powerful. Uh, I use this one because then if your website goes down, you still have a backup in your Dropbox or on your PC. And the plugin that I always use to build up my pages is Elementor, uh, where you can use drag and drop to design your pages. It's really easy. You don't even have to use any code. And like you've seen so far, we've not used any code to create the website uh, because I myself am a designer. So I just use WordPress without coding. And that's why I use Elementor because I can use drag and drop to actually create the pages. And this plugin is a plugin that you can download via the link in the description, or you can go to my website, livingwithpixels.com slash links. And there's a link over here to get Elementor for free. If you click on this link, you will get a zip file into your downloads. Then if you go back to WordPress, you can upload the plugin right here. So this is another way to install plugins. Uh, you can use the search over here, but some plugins you have to use the upload plugin. So now you can just drag the zip in over here like this, where you just click on choose file and then you find the file that, that you've just downloaded. And if you click on install now, this is also a way on how you install plugins. So if you want to know what plugins I use for my websites, please let me know and then I will make another video about it. Uh, and then two more things that I want to show in this video. And that is one is the users. So you can add different users to uh, a website. So for example, if you are working on a website, you are the admin of the website and you have every right to uh, change anything uh, that you want on the website. But if you're working for a client, for example, you also want to give them access, but you don't want to give them full access. Uh, this depends, of course, on your client. Some clients want full access and some clients do not want full access. But here you can add users. So if you want to add another user, you, could, you can just click on add new, for example, and just create another user. So this is my client's name and you just fill in their email and you can also make them an administrator, for example, or you can make them an editor. Uh, which is a limited role. So for this client, I'm going to make them an editor. So now if I click on editor and I check this box, they will get an email and they will get a login. So they can also view the website before the website is live and they can make changes. They can change the text, but they have a limited role compared to your admin role. And the last thing that I want to show is settings. So there are a few settings that you can change inside of WordPress. So for example, the title of your website. So what people see when they hover over your tabs right here. Uh, uh, now it says just another WordPress website. For this website, I'm gonna pick this official website and I'm gonna put that right here because that is what, what people will see when they hover over the tabs. This is my admin email and you can leave this and just 
click on save changes and there are two more things in the settings that i want to show you one is the reading and on this page you can set one of your pages as the home page so as default wordpress is a blog uh, so if you don't want to create a blog and you want to create a business website for example what you can do over here you can say to wordpress like i want another page to be the home page i have created a separate home page as we did in the pages step so now i can say to wordpress like i want the home page to be the home page so that's all you need to know for this. And if you can then click on save changes, you go back to your website and you click on the logo. Now the homepage, which has no content, is the homepage of the website. So that's really cool. And the last thing that I wanna show you is permalinks. As default, it's set at day and name. Uh, so every blog post that you create will get a slash, then the year, then the number, and then sample post. But I always use this because it looks a lot cleaner. So then if you create a blog post and you call it uh, my first blog post, it's just gonna be your domain name, slash, and then the name that you've chosen for that blog post. So that's also one of the things that I always do before I start uh, developing the whole website. So now I click on save changes and now you absolutely know the most basic things about WordPress. If you understood everything that I said until now, you can work with WordPress. The only things you have to understand is how to install WordPress and you need to know what plugins you need to use, how you can use Elementor, where I've also made a video about. So if you wanna get into the drag and drop and you wanna make it really easy for yourself to build up your first pages, then go check the second video in the description below and like I said if you want to get WordPress you can go to wordpress.org and download it and then you need to install it on your hosting uh, WordPress here is free but if you want to get a live website like this you need to pay for a domain so in this example it's hoofweiser.nl so maybe your website is uh, yourname.com and this is the only thing that costs money it's a few dollars per month so it's not a really huge investment uh, especially not if it's for a business but compared to most other website systems wordpress is the cheapest to use uh, because the system itself is free uh, because you only pay for the hosting and your domain name so if you are also excited about this you can check out my other videos because i have a lot of videos about website creation maybe you want to start your own web design business that is what this living with pixels channel is about so yeah that's it thank you for watching and if if you have any questions please let them know down below and then i hope to see you in the next video